When you see these two signs between words in the Qur'an, it means you have to perform ishba' which functions as a med tabi'i or natural med of two counts. And in certain situations, they can get extended up to four counts, just like a disconnected med. So these signs should sound like this. Innahu ala raja'ihi laqadir So the existence of these signs make it very easy for you to realize that here you're supposed to extend for two counts as a med tabi'i. But if you're not using the same type of mushaf, or a mushaf that doesn't have signs, or not the same signs, it can become challenging to recite properly. This lesson will help you understand how ishba' exists, and what are the exceptions to its rules. First of all, ishba' happens between words, and it only involves extending the added ha to the end of the word. We also call it ha al kinaya And there are three conditions that have to be met for this ha to get ishba or in other words, to be extended. First, the ha itself is not an original part of the word. So it has to be an added pronoun to the word. Second, the ha has to come between two letters that have fatha, dhamma, or kasra. So, there shouldn't be sukun before it or after it. And last is that you have to keep on reading. If you stop at the word, then there is no extension required. Now let's take these three conditions and try to apply them on a number of examples. First example. مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُ مَالُهُ وَمَا كَسَبَ so here the ha is an extra part of the word. The original word is mal. So ha is added to it. And it existed between two letters. And one has dhamma and the other one has fatha. And since we kept on reading, we said maluhu wa ma kasab. One more example. Yahsabu anna ma lahu Again, we have the same word here, so we extend it for two counts. There is the possibility to extend for four counts. But the word that comes after it, أَخْلَدَ We also have هَا الْكِنَايَ here as well, because the هَا came between the دَال that has فَتْحَة and the كَاف that has فَتْحَة as well. But in this case, since we stopped at the end of the word, there was no reason to apply the إِشْبَاعَ in this position. وَفَوَاكِهَ مِمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ Here we didn't extend because the ha at the end of the word فَوَاكِه is an original part of the word so it is not an added pronoun. That's why there is no ishbah here whatsoever. Last example. أَيَحْسَبُ أَلَّن يَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ أَحَدٍ Here we have ها. It is not an original part of the word. But before it, there is sukun. So in this case, we are not allowed to extend or add ishba' here whatsoever. So the ها has to be an added part, so not an original part of the word. And it has to come between two letters that have haraka or fatha, dhamma, kasra. And you have to keep on reading for the ishba to happen. Now, this rule could be applied for the entire Quran. However, there are five exceptions. Four of these cases should have ishba, and yet they don't. And you're going to read them without ishba. And there is one case that shouldn't have ishba. Yet it does. Let's look at the first four cases. <laughs> 
These two examples are very similar, so I'm discussing them together. In these two cases, we have ha that is extra, and it came between two letters that have kasra, and the other one has fatha, and we kept on reading, but still, we cannot apply ishba' in this position. Next exception. In these two cases, we also see that ha is not an original part of the word. It came between two letters that have Fatha, Dhamma, or Kasra, we kept on reading, and yet we cannot extend here or add Ishba'a. And now the final case where you should not have Ishba'a, yet there is. Here we have the ha that was added to the end of the word, but before it there is a ya that has sukun on top. So this breaks the second rule, and yet we are going to add ishba' to the end of this ha. But now you might be wondering, then why didn't these cases follow the rule? And the answer is simple, because this is how we have learned it from the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. This is how he recited them, and that's how we've learned them. So next time you wonder about Ishba', remember the three rules and the five exceptions. Thanks for watching. If you want to start your journey to learn the Tajweed of the Quran, you can click on this link. And if you want to understand the Quran in Arabic, then you should click on that link. And finally, I hope you've learned something new today, and I will see you next time.